say that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. For our project, we were asked to create a canoe entirely out of concrete. The canoe has to be able to flow in water and hold as much weight as possible before sinking. We also had to follow the requirements and constraints in order to not get disqualified from fed. Some things that could prevent the canoe from floating would be leaks in the canoe, the canoe being too heavy, or if the shape is not even. We can test this by filling a plastic tub or some other type of container that is large enough to hold the canoe with water and see if it can float. If it does float, then we can add some sort of weight to it incrementally to see how much weight it can hold. To design our boat, we thought of ways that we could make concrete float. We came up with two ideas for a lightweight material to mix with the concrete, styrofoam and fertilizer. Mixing one of these two materials with the concrete should give the boat a light enough density that if we max out the dimensions and make the walls as thin as we possibly can, that the boat should float. We decided to use styrofoam as the aggregate because we all agreed that we thought it would work better. From the design plan to a CAD 3D model of the mold to the mold itself, we have successfully planned what the concrete canoe will look like in addition to the shape that it will take. The dimensions of our concrete canoe are the largest we were allowed to make them in order to maximize surface area, which is 18 inches long, 5 inches tall, and 6 inches wide. With this mold, we will be able to make as many identical prototypes as we need in order to maximize the amount of time our concrete canoe can stay afloat. For our first prototype, we faced a challenge right off the bat. We had accidentally purchased concrete with large aggregate instead of concrete with little to no aggregate included. So when we had started to mix shredded foam into the mix, the concrete looked watery and chunky rather than the slurry we had wanted and we had to go buy the right concrete, or sandcrete. <clears throat> the foam we had purchased came in large balls, which we shredded by hand into semi-small chunks. We then slathered the slurry onto the mold and let it set overnight. The next day, upon removal from the mold, it shattered into a few big chunks. We decided to scrap it and make another prototype instead of trying to put it together with more concrete. After we made our mix, we once again put it on our 3D printed mold and spent most of the next day sanding and painting the concrete canoe once removing it from the mold. We sanded too much off the top of the canoe, which made our canoe sink when we tested it. And the competition was the next day and there wasn't enough time to fix this problem, so we tried to make up for it aesthetically. Originally, we used small styrofoam balls as our aggregate, but the styrofoam left too much air in the concrete. The air pockets caused the canoe to become very weak and brittle, and the canoe broke easily. For our second attempt, we used fertilizer as our aggregate since it's much smaller, but still buoyant. Our final ratio of fertilizer to concrete was 1 to 4. In addition, we put a plastic mesh inside the canoe to make it more secure, but this ended up being a major pitfall. The plastic mesh prevented us from sanding our canoe down further, which ultimately was the cause of our canoe sinking. When sanding our canoe, the concrete cracked on the middle and was irreparable. Unfortunately, there was not enough time before the competition to create another canoe, and we had to take our cracked canoe to fed. Upon putting the canoe in water, water leaked into the canoe through the crack and caused the canoe to sink, in addition to the uneven sides. As a result, we did not place in the fed competition. One problem that we faced was the structure of the canoe. Our first prototype was fragile, and when we started to sand the walls, it cracked and fell apart. The reason for this was because it had no support and also we used the wrong ratio of water to concrete. To account for this, on our second canoe, we added a plastic mesh through it to give it structural support and added less water to the concrete and the second canoe ended up being much stronger. One of the main things that we would do differently is we would try to make and test more prototypes. If we found the right structure and mix of concrete, we would have been able to make a canoe that floats. We also would have started making the prototypes earlier. We put off making the first prototype, which didn't give us enough time to make improvements and create a successful canoe. Another thing we could have done differently was to be more careful when we were sanding the canoe to make it the right size and shape. Both of our prototypes ended up cracking because when we were sanding it, we were being a little too aggressive, which led to a crack in the walls of the canoe. We also made the canoe's walls too short on the top, which let water overflow, causing the canoe to sink. 
The advice we would give to next year's freshmen would be to start making your prototypes as early as possible because time flies and the earlier you start, the earlier you can find a canoe that works. Then you can always work on ways to improve the prototype and end up with a finished project that can hold lots of weight and float. Another piece of advice is to try to meet up once a week separate from your lab because it's important to plan and discuss the steps of the design process with your group and at the end of the lab is not enough time to get a lot of work done. So schedule a time each week that will work with your entire group schedule and have an hour meeting.